Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Nice to be here. Absolutely. Adam Davidson opened yesterday and he was talking about how designers need to go out into the world, or, I mean, look inward first, find what makes them unique, find who their ideal client is, and then really broadcast that to the world. And I watched that talk and was like, well, this is amazing because tomorrow we've got two designers coming on stage who have 100% done the work figured that out and are really putting that into practice in their own business. So what I'm really excited about is to offer people here a roadmap to really looking inward, looking at who you are, and then putting that into practice. Well, where does that journey start? Now, Everick, I want to start with you because I know it's a <laughs> pandemic story, right? Oh, I don't think we have Everick's mic gone. be luck. There it is. Hi. Um, <laughs> you I was going to say, it, it's hard to do, you know, particularly when you think you're great, right? Um, but when you really stop and what really arrested our attention was the pandemic. There was a moment in time where all of our business came to a complete stop and um, I was convinced that I was essential. Those, of the, those of you who know me know that every morning I woke up and I said, I'm essential. <laughs> and I kept being told, no, you're non-essential. And I'm like, no, I'm essential. <laughs> <laughs> and so after a little bit of time uh, of sitting through this pandemic, I turned to my wife, my boss, my partner here, and I said, I think I want to hire a business coach. Um, thinking that she was going to say, you're out of your mind. <laughs> um, and she blessed it. Um, we ended up hiring a business coach out of England. Um, and the first thing he challenged me with was, how am I different from everybody in this room? And I went, oh, shit, I've wasted my time and money here because we're all the same. We all deliver great work. There's nothing special about what I do. <laughs> For two weeks, he forced me to think about how I could differentiate myself in this industry. Um, and that led me to we're a husband and wife team. Um, I focus a lot on ROI. A lot of people go, what is ROI? Return on investment. Um, very important to my client. What I did during this time was not only change the messaging of our brand, but I developed a vocabulary. And we'll talk about mm -hmm. that later and what that means. <laughs> well, I say that first, that two weeks, when you're saying, well, I make spaces, I, I'm like every other designer, how did you make that journey from what we do is all the same to there are these really key things about my business that are radically different from others and that I want to own and that I want to put out there? What was that arc for you? Yeah, the, I think the most important part was really getting ego out of the way, waking up and saying, I got to place the ego out of the way. So all of us in the room, if you go look at our websites, we do the same thing. It's all about our portfolio. Um, what I learned first and foremost is it's a business. I run a business. I'm an entrepreneur. That's the most significant thing. And so what I learned through my business coach is when somebody arrives on my homepage, it shouldn't be about my ego or about my portfolio. It should be about what I offer and how I help them solve mm -hmm. their challenges. So if you go to everickbrown.com, you'll see we show you a little bit of ego, but mostly we're, we're actually describing for the client what their headaches are. And I describe those headaches as time, um, money, and fear. And so some of it is when you think about fear, you have couples. One wants uh, a TV room. The other one wants a more refined experience. One wants to spend money. One doesn't. And how do you take those divergent perspectives and elevate them? I had been doing it for 20 years, but I had not been marketing it. And so that's what we began to message, and that's what set me apart from the rest of the industry, I think. <laughs> Lisa will tell you it's important what you think about yourself and how you fit into the puzzle. Um, but you'll see that instead of marketing, we only create beautiful rooms. We actually market, we give you the best return on investment. Um, we mitigate risk for you. And oh, by the way, we de deliver you a beautifully appointed space. It's so interesting to me that the beautifully appointed space is the oh, by the way. Yeah. Um, you went into this with the confidence that your clients know what ROI means, that mitigating risk is a meaningful thing to them and, and a powerful motivator. 
what kind of research did you do? I mean, you, I, mean you, I know you combed through 20 years of clients, of projects, of things that went right, things that went wrong. How do you plot that out to start to make sense of that? Yeah, I think it's, you know, I say I'm blessed enough to have 20 years, but what it allowed me to do was to go through a bunch of data that mm -hmm. I had not touched because I kept thinking of myself as an interior designer as opposed to an entrepreneur. So when I took the information that I had of 20 years, which was she's 45 years old, um, she has 2.5 kids, she lives in the suburbs, she owns multiple homes, she travels several times a year, she plays tennis, she plays golf, yoga is very important. All of a sudden, I developed these goals and a, a point of view of what I was designing towards. It doesn't she, mean that- She drives a Tesla too, right? Yes, and she drives a Tesla. <laughs> Half of my clients own Teslas. Um, and the reason why I kind of sum up this customer profile is not to sort of brag about who my client is, but it's really more to say, you know who she is now also, and you could begin to design for her. So when you have those goals and those attributes, it makes your job every day that much easier because you know what your number one priority is. Eric mentioned that you know the, the husband and wife component of your business is really interesting and appealing to your clients. Lisa, you found that the partnership is a strength and really makes them feel comfortable. How does that show up in your, in your interactions with clients? Yeah, I thought, I had no idea that that was sort of a specialty or that mm -hmm. made a difference, but as we started to like go through our client base and, you know, how did we get those people? What did they like about us? And literally people would say, you know, I love that you guys are a husband and wife team. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, a lot of times you have a single man going out into a home to work with a woman who's not, you know, who's alone and there's maybe some kind of a level of discomfort. You come in as a couple, everybody all, all of a sudden relaxes and gets a little bit more comfortable. And, you know, she's not worried about what, what does my husband think about me spending time with this man? <laughs> you know, I'm going shopping. You know, there's little things that just sort of start to melt away. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that husband and wife team is of value to, you know, other couples in that way. But we also have a lot of of older couples who for some reason just love it we also bounce things off of each other i can play bad guy he can play he always mm -hmm. has to play good guy because he's a designer right <laughs> but and i'm good at being bad girl <laughs> but, but you know we can always can sort of side up mm -hmm. with each you know the other yeah. couple and you know um yeah if the husband says you know i really don't want to do this i'd like to do this I'm like oh, you know what i kind of think he's right you know mm -hmm. like we can sort of play off each other and do clients see that in, oh 100 the percent. they feel like they have a teammate you have to give everybody a voice and sometimes if everick is designing and working with you know let's say um the wife or the girlfriend or whatever and i'm talking to the husband on the other side it, you know, we're able to say, he might not hear some of his mm -hmm. concerns, and I might. So, you know, I, I think that those, that kind of uh, dynamic is mm -hmm. really great. And they will tell us, you know, we enjoy this process. Or, yeah. or they just like one of us better than the other, you know? <laughs> okay. And that of just You're a super, done. right? You're right. going to connect with somebody. <laughs> you know? And, you know, he's really good at, you know, being much more um, thoughtful sometimes when the frustrations start to creep up and sometimes I'm a little snappy. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, it's good for us to, you know, hand off mm -hmm. you know, projects in that way. How did you lean into, you, you uncover all of these things about your clients. How, how does this then transform your business? How does this kind of become the through line that you present to clients, not only in your marketing, but sort of in every other part of your process. Well, it does give you an opportunity to target market, right? Mm -hmm. So once we figure out our demographic and we were really clear on our, de on our demographic, then marketing becomes very clear because yeah. you know that those are not your clients, <laughs> these are. Yeah. And, you know, you're not going to get everybody, mm -hmm. right? But if you focus on those that are typically your clients, that typically like your work, and one of the things that I know for sure mm -hmm. is given the opportunity to finish the project, he's never had a client that wasn't happy with, with the outcome. Mm -hmm. They might not have liked the process. They might not have liked how much money they spent. They might not have liked working with me. They might not have liked, you know, paying that design fee, but they love their home. Mm -hmm. And so that confidence and then going to that target market, I think, you know, really um, 
helped us be secure in, Mm -hmm. you know, how we were approaching our business. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just going to add to that. I think the most important thing is communication. Mm -hmm. Um, And communication sort of weaves through everything we do, I think. So when you think of style, it's interesting to me. The first thing a a potential client will ask you is, what is your style? I liken style to a language. um, And I like to think of myself as multilingual, meaning I speak classic traditional, updated traditional, transitional, modern. Um, But that doesn't mean I'm better than somebody who only speaks one language. It just means I'm fluent in several different styles. And not everybody is. But that same thing carries over. That thing is communication, right? So in most couples, there's a collaboration when they start a project. I think often Mm -hmm. what stops a project from starting is budget. Um, or one person wants something that the other person doesn't. So if you can get in front of a client and help each one of them communicate their ideas, as Lisa said, we can advocate for both. Mm -hmm. Um, There's never a situation where I walk in and I feel comfortable with the underdog being the underdog. I try to make both sides of the project equally yoked. Mm -hmm. Um, so that they feel they're always getting something through the process. Kind of the the aftermath, right? You've made these changes. You've done a lot of soul searching. Does it feel different Mm -hmm. to go to work, to answer your email, to be on the job site? Yeah, I would say that prior to this, um, you know, digging in and really starting to understand our business in a different way and having the time to do it because, you know, all you're doing or we were doing before COVID and, you know, even now a little bit after having that break of time was you're just constantly chasing that next project and you're Mm -hmm. constantly trying to pay that mortgage. So, you know, that takes up all your space Mm -hmm. to have this time just to sit and decompress and unpack everything Mm -hmm. Then now when we work, it's so much more strategic and Mm -hmm. it's so much more purposeful and we're so confident of the direction. Mm -hmm. And we have a long way to go to build out, you know, the company the way that we really want to. And we learned so much here. And I'm so grateful to you for putting this together because we learned so much from all of you and the other speakers. And I love this camaraderie. um, But we we have our direction. Mm -hmm. And we understand where we fit into the market. And we understand the service that we're offering. And we are comfortable in our space. That clarity has to be so... Yeah energizing and powerful. How does that feel for you? No, it's amazing for me because it allows me the creative time Mm -hmm. that I need, um, which is not always fluid, right? Like everybody thinks because you're creative, it happens like all the time. No, not all the time. Um, But when you sort of know what your messaging is, you know who your, your big whales are and what you're striving for and ultimately what you want your brand to be, it allows you time to focus on what the client headaches are. Um, And so what we do is we bridge where they are to where they wanna go. Mm -hmm. Um, And knowing that I can do that and focus on that gives me a lot of confidence when I get in front of a client every other day and we also know our buzzwords Mm -hmm. you know like we went through a list and it's like well here are the things that we know we like that we know we do and so whenever we're having that conversation now Mm -hmm. the the initial proposal conversation with the client we we kind of know exactly how to have the conversation and Mm -hmm. you know throw out our buzzwords and you know we say things like well you know we like our home people walk in and go oh it feels like it gives you a hug so you know we like to do that for our clients Mm -hmm builds you, you know, create a home that feels like it gives you a hug. You Mm -hmm. know, there's little things that we know that people like love to hear and which are true to our brand and true to what we like to create. Mm -hmm. But now we have the language for it. That's amazing. For someone who is starting now, they heard the talk yesterday, they heard you guys today and they say, this is a journey I need to take. Mm -hmm. Where do you start? What questions do you ask yourself? Yeah, you ask yourself the hard questions. Um, I think often we start with what all our positives are. I like to also throw into that bucket what the deltas are because they make it crystal clear how you're different from everybody else and what you need to work on. But it may offer you also something that you should hand off to somebody else. Yeah. You got, I was like, can I put you on the spot? Like, how did you balance out? Because we were talking about this earlier. You said, you know, identify what the deltas are. For you, where did you say, I'm really good at this, and here's where I... 
So well, it's not a problem. We're married. One, I tell him what's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my number one of my number one deltas is project management. Um, but where I offset my weakness in project management is with my people skills. Um, and so when I know what my weakness is, I'm able to dwell on my strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's pretty, pretty powerful. And that was, I mean, for you, that was the root of starting this process. Yes. It takes time. Everybody's really busy right now. Is it worth it to push pause? Oh, no. And look inward. Oh, it absolutely yeah. is. You know, I jokingly say the pandemic allowed the world to really get a sense that global warming is happening. Um, but it also allowed me to stop and really focus on my brand, my messaging, where I wanted to go. We literally had four months, five mm -hmm. months of zero business. So what I did was I really dove into strategic planning. Now, I'm not suggesting that you stop your business for four <laughs> or five months, but I would highly encourage you at a minimum to take a weekend if you can get five or seven days in to just focus on where you want to go, how you want to do it, and how you differentiate yourself from, body, from everybody else in the room. It is so overwhelmingly beneficial. Mm -hmm. I think that's the perfect note. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lisa, Everett, you guys are incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you. <laughs>